Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have back with us Talia Bashani, who's a real estate attorney, negotiation expert, and founder of the Tab Law Firm. And we'll be talking today about pre-market prep for listings to prepare a property for successful market launch. Talia, welcome back to the program. Good morning, Mike. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Yeah, you're welcome. And I've been uh, uh, really fun talking with you about your process of working with realtors to help them scale their business. And we've talked through your blueprint for success on listings. And now we're to the point of, okay, we've, we've got to get the property ready to be, you know, spectacularly standing out from the others. So where do we start with uh, uh, preparing that property for uh, uh, the market? Yeah. So I always like to uh, tell the agents that I work with to really get the early pre-market buzz going. Um, This builds up a lot of excitement, anticipation. Um, They can, you know, uh, display different things on social media. They can do, um, you know, Instagram live tours from the property. Uh, They can have early broker open houses or wine and cheese parties or whatever it may be. So I like that early initial buzz before it hits the market because there could be buyers agents out there and even buyers that maybe have their eye on it that want to be first in line um, to see the property once it hits the market and goes live. Um, and that could generate a lot of interest and possibly a bidding war like you never know. So it could be that perfect property that somebody has been looking for and generating that early pre-market buzz while they're still preparing the property to go live on the market is a really helpful tool. So the coming soon and the pre-market buzz, that kind of brings up, you know, hey, it's not on the market yet, but here's what's coming. So it kind of, you know, allows people, whether it's the a potential buyer or other brokers to know, hey, this fits what we're looking for. I'm going to just watch intently. Depending on the size of the house, are there some advanced ways that you can uh, complete this pre-market buzz, you know, such as, you know, taking a waiting list for private showings before it even goes uh, live? But what have you seen that way? Yeah, so definitely. So, you know, the more that the agent can kind of market and advertise the property, there's different things that they can use. I personally really like the wine and cheese parties, or if there's a pool and it's a beautiful day, like kind of like an outdoor, you know, pool party, so to speak, anything that's really going to highlight the features of the property. And then at that point, you can give tours, you know, you can give private tours. Um, Yes, you can. Many agents say, oh, I have a client this would be perfect for, you know, I'd love to bring them. I'd love to schedule an appointment once this goes live. So, yes, that that kind of initial um, introduction and the pre-market buzz and those events are, are always great. And then before you even get there, like I said, you can do video tours or live tours of you just walking through the property and say, hey, guys, I'm super excited. You know, I'm preparing this property for, for you know, listing. It's going to go live in two weeks. You guys are really going to love it. There's such so many great features with this. And just kind of, again, interacting um, with, you know, the uh, the market and, and just the general buyers that that agent has, I think also goes um, a long way. In addition to making it possibly a featured listing um, on their website or on their page. So it's, you know, just, you know, first and at the forefront, um, I think also will help highlight the property and also mentioning it uh, maybe at the uh, agent's um, sales meetings and letting the other, you know, their colleagues know and their teammates know and everybody else in the agency, hey, I have this great listing coming. If you know any buyers, let me know. I'll make sure to get you guys in there early. Really good points, Talia. Um, Makes me think of a question. What do you think about this? In a lot of marketing, it's so important to be personal. So when you're doing the videos or the the email or the like you're mentioning the the social media post, do you recommend creating a campaign specifically speaking to other brokers and another campaign specifically speaking to a potential buyer? So for instance, you know, you could do ones for brokers where it says, Hey, your high-end buyers are gonna love this property. And then the one for the potential buyers, you will feel right at home with, 
you know, these features. Do you think that that would enhance the personalization? Yes, absolutely. I, that's a great idea. I think they can always direct uh, to their audience, depending on the specifics of who their audience is. So they can do multiple campaigns, multiple, you know, uh, shout outs and, uh, you know, live tours. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily do a uh, wine and cheese party, you know, for potential buyers, you know, per se, but um, definitely they can have different marketing streams and avenues um, targeting their different audiences. So if they do have a whole list of buyers and, you know, separate and aside from their agents, yes, they can definitely spin it. Um, because again, we're all about doubling the commission and, and, you know, maximizing your potential, um, to, uh, close more, more sales and make more money. So absolutely. If you get a direct buyer, it's a sure shot. You're going to double your commission right there. Yeah. So absolutely want to focus on both groups. And good point about spinning it. It brings me, uh, makes me think of, you know, perception of value is key because mm -hmm. spinning is a positive thing. It's just highlighting the positives. Perception of value is making sure that the first thing someone has in their mind about this property is the highest and, and uh, most, most valuable feature. So talk a little bit about things like curb appeal and highlighting the interior competitive advantage that would make that property stand out so that both all the other brokers and potential buyers are going to quickly see what uh, are the highlights of that property. Sure. So it's similar, like if you have a blockbuster featured movie, right? And then you do a little sizzle reel or a trailer, you know, for that um, movie to make sure that you're drawing in a lot of excitement and a lot of, um, you know, buzz and attraction from your audience. So it's the same thing when doing it with a listing and with the property, you're going to take the absolute you know, uh, highlights the best features of that property and create, you know, a little sizzle reel or a little trailer, so to speak, where you can really say, hey, you know, check out this amazing listing that I have. Um, we're, you know, it's coming to the market in a couple of weeks. Um, look at this, these beautiful high ceilings in this pool or this yard, or if it's a condo, this outdoor space of the views, million dollar view you have here, like really just, and just having little snippets of all of the keyed featured items for that property to make people want to see more you know, and say, oh my gosh, that looks amazing. I can't wait to see this in person. Or let me reach out to her and see when I can get my client in. Or, oh, this would be perfect for my family. Um, I, I'm definitely interested in, in seeing this. So by doing that, getting that attraction and that perception of value, it really does, you know, draw the audience in to want to see more, you know, just like the trailer for the blockbuster movie. Yes. And, and just like, um, we want to highlight those benefits. I know one part of a transaction is one of the disclosures that the seller has to sign that says there's no issues with, and then there's a whole checklist of, you know, no problem with the sewer, the septic, the roof, but talk a little bit about what the seller can do to present. Here's the things that I've done to upgrade recently. And here's the highlights of these, because people yeah. don't just buy a house for a price. They want to connect with that emotionally. So how can the realtor uh, help the seller articulate mm -hmm. that so that it really resonates with the potential buyers? Yeah. So I always like to recommend that um, agents uh, ask the seller for a letter and have them write everything that they love about their property, including any renovations or upgrades or, um, you know, even their happiest moments and how long they've lived there and, and what they've enjoyed best. Oh, I, you know, love sitting in the sunroom and, um, you know, reading, reading my book or practicing yoga, or this has been my little sanctuary or, you know, just little personal touches that allows a potential buyer to relate, um, to the property more also is very attractive and appealing. So not only do you have maybe a list of, you know, the features or the upgrades or, oh, we converted, you know, this half bath into a full bath. So now you have an extra full bath or, oh, we, you know, turn this room into a walk-in closet or whatever it may be. So not only do you have all of the upgrades and the extra finishes that the seller put into the property, but you also kind of have their 
own personal, um, you know, uh, history that they have to the property um, and what's really made it, you know, great for them. Maybe half of their garage, they turned into a fitness center and, oh, I lost 20 pounds, you know, just working at, out at my home gym. It's been the, the best thing I could have ever done for myself, you know, taking those breaks from work, you know, working remotely and, and working out, whatever it may be, all of those could really appeal and help a buyer relate to that. Like, oh, that sounds really good. I've been really trying to get my fitness, you know, game in check. So I, yeah, I could definitely see myself doing that. So those relatable type of, um, uh, you know, features and stories from the seller really goes a long way. You know, it reminds me of that show on HGTV several years ago called, I think it was called If Walls Could Talk. And it was just like the stories of the house. And yeah, they might've been sensational stories, bigger stories, but you can tell the story of each uh, home because of of the things you just mentioned, you know, Hey, we love because our kids grew up in the backyard and we love, and it just really brings that warmness to there. So stories really do sell. I think that is excellent. Absolutely. Yeah. I completely agree. So talk a little bit about Um, when you're saying getting the word out with other real estate agents and doing the broker caravans and things like that, talk a little bit more about that from the perspective of the law of abundance, because a lot of times, you know, there's a lot of maybe resistance where people say, I just need to sell this and make my money. But in, in the other hand, it's like, if we get, let more people know about this, that are yes, competitors of ours, but at least it brings buyers in. And from the law of abundance, there's plenty of business out there for everybody. And what I bring to other people will one day turn around and be something that they bring to me. Yes, absolutely. So everything goes full circle. Um, and I think the more that you give and the more that you offer, like you said, the more that you'll get back. So one thing that I've seen a lot um, here in New York is that a lot of agents, let's say that take on a new listing for maybe a new development, a new condo project or things like that. What they do is instead of just offering wine and cheese, they offer something of value. So they say, hey, we're going to have a free headshots party. Okay, Mm -hmm. so you guys come to the property, um, you get a free headshot. Uh, We have a photographer lined up in one of the model units. In addition, we'll give you a tour, you know, of of the building and the amenities and and the different units that are for sale. Um, You get your headshot. So it's a win-win. So that really draws agents in more than just wine and cheese or a cocktail hour, whatever it may be, because now they're getting something of value. So they're more inclined to attend um, your event or, or come you know, uh, to your new listing, because you're offering uh, something to them. And then in turn, again, they are seeing a property that they may not have seen otherwise in person. You know, it's one thing to see photos or listings come across the MLS or Street Easy or whatever you use. But when you're really there in person, you really have an appreciation for the property more so. And especially when you're sell- selling a new condo development that has multiple unit layouts, you know, at different kinds from one bedrooms to two bedrooms to three threes, you it really can appeal to a wider audience. So more people will come in, um, they get their free headshot, they meet the listing broker, they see the properties, they have clients in mind, um, and then it goes live. And then now they're lining up, you know, um, yes. to, to bring in their, their clients. So um, that's definitely yeah. helpful. Yeah, really, really huge. So talk. we've talked a little bit about amplifying the property through maybe telling the story of the, the actual property. Now talk a little bit about amplifying the, the visual appeal through maybe staging and photos and floor plans and drones and all the things that would bring that property to life so that when the other agents and potential buyers see it, it's put it it's, uh, in the best light. Yeah. So now with all the creative marketing that we have going on and all the video editing tools and things like that, you can really make a property pop and shine. Um, One, obviously doing 4K um, videography really kind of gives that HD feel where it's like live and direct. And again, with all of these, you know, different uh, editing tools, it can like, you know, um, you know, pan from one scene to another scene. It can you know, you can have fire and lightning bolts and whatever you want, really just kind of to give it that allure to make it stand out. So one, I think that's really great. Two, 
it's always important to have hire a professional photographer because as we all know, angles are key. So the wide angle lenses really go a long way beyond just, you know, a, a cell phone or a regular camera. So the HD wide angle uh, lenses for the professional photographers um, really help kind of bring out uh, or bring the property to life um, when you're taking those photos. And then finally, with the staging, you know, it really kind of depends on the type of property that you're marketing, you know, is it a property that's currently vacant? Is it a mark? Is it a property that, you know, maybe the owners still live in? And what kind of tweaks can you do in order to showcase that property? So obviously, for like the new construction or the vacant properties, staging goes a long way, just, you know, walking into an empty room, um, kind of, you know, prevents buyers from having that visual. So really staging and having a clean, simple uh, finish um, would really help sell. And then similarly, if it's just, um, if it's a property that you, the owners are still residing in, you can also kind of freshen it up a little bit by bringing in flowers or plants or throw pillows or, um, you know, rugs, if there's nothing down. Um, or just patching up, you know, maybe little eyesores or trying to kind of freshen it up a little bit, obviously opening up all the blinds, all the windows, um, all the umbrellas, if it's a pool. So um, that really helps for showcase the properties. And again, brings the appeal and the perception of value out even more. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. So now that we've gotten the story out there of why the property stands out and the visual with all of the photos and videos and things like that, now you roll into now let's get the word out broad, you know, the digital marketing. So let's talk a little bit about what digital marketing is available. And then I also think that it would be important to talk about should the real estate agent learn how to do each and every one of those aspects themselves, or should that be something that they collaborate and have someone else help them with because maybe it's just not their strong suit? Yeah. So I would say an agent, their real, their skill really comes down to selling, you know, um, and, and they're, you know, um, really focused on the real estate at hand. They're not required to be also creative and, you know, an advertiser and marketing and, and video editing and all of that. So I would say it's really important for an agent to locate their marketing team or videographer. There's tons of, um, you know, just single uh, contracting companies or independent, um, you know, videographers that a lot of agents can reach out to that have experience with real estate. If you just follow other agents' pages and you see, you can actually see the credits that they give to certain videographers. So that's one way. Also, a lot of the agencies, depending on who the broker um, is uh, a part of, they have internal, you know, marketing departments or internal on staff videographers and photographers um, or a specific list or preferred list. So um, I would definitely say utilize those resources, reach out to the professionals that might be a little bit more creative that can, you know, showcase it for you in the best way. Because again, the hot, the more, you know, high end the display um, and the production is of that property, the more people you're going to attract that way. So different avenues include, you know, TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. And like I said, I really love the live feature, which you can always save and pin to your profile, even after you go live in case people, you know, didn't catch it. But all of that really is just helpful or bringing your videographer to follow you you know, through a, a, a video tour, you know, and yeah. you're just yeah. talking. So it's not just the videographer, you know, and the property, but you're walking people through, you know, just you as kind of like the presenter of the property. Um, so that also, um, while you're, you know, showcasing the different finishes and features, so that also can go a long way. So social media and digital marketing um, platforms are really huge because, it's just live, in your face, direct, immediate, um, and you can get that instant gratification from it. And do you also recommend once all of the social media assets are built out with a campaign with you know videos and the images and things like that to incorporate the seller to help spread it through their social media channels too? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. 
absolutely. The seller, you know, it's a fine line though, because sometimes in certain listing agreements, the there might be a clause that, you know, the seller might negotiate stating, well, if I locate the buyer, then I don't owe you a commission because it's through my own efforts, you know? Okay. So some listing agreements will have the clause that state, you know, regardless of who locates the buyer, the commission's getting paid. And that's what the standard listing agreement holds. But I have seen some sellers who try to negotiate around that. Um, so just be mindful what your particular listing agreement has with that seller, because if the seller procures a direct buyer um, uh, that does not is not through the efforts of the agent, then no commission would be due. So, you know, the seller, it's kind of, I wouldn't rely on the seller so much. Definitely, I think, you know, the agent and their team and the agency itself, you know, can really promote it, maybe even on, um, you know, the featured listing page of the agency, not just the broker, you know, not just the agent, um, or other things like that. But maybe the agent is a part of a different organizations or PTA groups or, you know, um, any type of groups really that they can use it as multiple outlets in order to showcase their property. And yep. look, a lot of people, I think the most important thing for a lot of realtors to do is communication is key. People don't know what you do unless you tell them, right? Yep. So there's a lot of realtors that maybe just walk around and, you know, um, don't really kind of vocalize or communicate that they're an agent you know, and that they would be happy to help you in your next um, purchase or sale. So the more that you really promote yourself, like we were talking earlier, um, will allow that agent to build more of a community and to get more clients through referrals or word of mouth. Yeah, exactly. Do you, when you talk about social media, do you recommend um, buying paid ads on certain platforms to see if that helps expand out the reach? Uh, that could definitely help, you know, depending on the cost, um, that could definitely help. You can, you know, there's what's called the real deal, which is a, a trade magazine for real estate. You can definitely buy ads in the real deal. Um, you know, uh, Miami has something called ocean drive magazine, which people can buy ads, you know, in that depending on the circulation and, and the reach and the cost. Um, yes, you know, ads for the most part though, ads pretty much have like, you know, a shelf life. So with real estate buying ads kind of, and then you might, you know, and then what if you get an offer, you know, next week, now you just spent all that money on the ad, you know, so you kind of really have to determine, I would say, don't visit the ads until it's absolutely necessary, you know, maybe 60 days in or something like that, because really utilize your resources, you know, in advance. Um, because it's not going to be an ongoing perpetual. Type yeah, that's of a thing. good point about <clears throat> shelf life because like social media ads, if you bought mm -hmm. Facebook ads or Instagram ads, you could turn that off in a minute. So yeah. that might be better, uh, suited than maybe print ads. But then again, if you're going for specific target audience, that could be a fit. So as with anything, yeah. it just, yeah. you got to monitor it. You have to check the metrics and see what the return is. Um, you know, obviously there's tools like social media. We've talked about email, of course, video, um, do you recommend things like um, text messaging where that would be a, a direct contact to some potential buyers? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. I would, you know, I would say if, you know, there um, is a link, you could send a link, you know, to your listing, to your potential buyers. And, or if you have WhatsApp groups, you know, you could put everybody in a group and kind of uh, share and spread the word that way. If you have a monthly newsletter, you know, included in your newsletter, I, I get a lot of emails and, and blasts um, from agents with, you know, their new listings or, you know, um, all of their listings and, you know, and they just blast it out. So absolutely. Email, newsletters, text messaging, um, you know, print, digital media, all of those things really go a long way. And the agent should just utilize it, you know, as much of those resources as they can. Um, because again, the more you put out there, the more return you're going to get. Excellent. Well, Talia, it's been great hearing some of these tips and advice for preparing that property for a successful sale. What's a concluding thought or a final tip? And then what's the best way that someone can reach out and connect with you? Thank you. So um, just wanted to wrap up and say that, you know, considering that 
Um, the whole goal at the end of the day is to really maximize broker commissions. Um, hopefully these set of tools and uh, marketing resources really resonate with a lot of agents and can help turn, you know, um, their uh, sales campaign into uh, even more to really reap the benefit of that. And I'm always available for any agents uh, to reach me directly at my 360 site, which is tally360.com, T-A-L-I 360.com. And happy to connect uh, with you guys and help you in your journey. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming on, Tally. It's been a real pleasure talking with you again. Thank you. You as well, Mike. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.